What's up, Leron here, coming at you from my slightly messy studio, and today I want to share with you this painting process of this portrait, and what I want to put an emphasis on is how I struggled a bit with the process. I wasn't feeling the technique, I wasn't really, things weren't feeling like they're going my way, but with a bit more perspective and a bit of more perseverance, we did get to a result that is satisfying. I really hope you enjoyed this one. One quick note before we get started, if you've been to my last live stream, you saw that I gave critique of paintings, and all the people who sent me emails I have not gotten to review, I will post a consolidated video review for all of you. So uh, I thought it would be a better idea than to actually do uh, one by one reply to emails to just give you an actual video response. So it's going to be in next week's uh, probably uh, Tuesday's video. So without further ado, let's get to this one. So first off, what I'm doing is pre-wetting the paper. Now I have to really pre-wet it. Originally, I planned to approach this one a la prima and just go with it like I showed you on a, on a recent live stream. Uh, but I decided that I do want to set up some of the gradual transitions in advance, wet and wet. Why? Because it's easier. When the paper is wet, it's much, much easier getting those smooth transi transitions. But as you will see, I have... Uh, failed miserably in that part. Now it doesn't mean the painting is a failure and that, that's something that will often happen. You'll be happy with your work but the process is not what you wanted it to be. So the paper is really really wet. I went over it with the brush a couple of times and now I can start injecting some paint. Now my goal here is to get the very smooth transition. So for example the shadow on the cheek, the transition from the shadow on the left, the very dark shadow onto the face, leaving that highlight on the forehead, uh, that transition from the light side of the nose to the shadow side to the left. Um, basically anything that's a smooth transition and I at this stage I don't care about background versus or you know the, the black around the statue and the statue itself. All I care about is what happens within the statue. Uh, now I gave it my best but the timing was a little off and that's just something that will happen. Uh, so when I came to add those uh, shadows that I wanted to get uh, a definition of at this stage uh, while still keeping it wet and wet I think I just went too dark like this is way too dark I should have gone uh, too light sorry sorry way too light uh, I should have gone darker uh, even though it was scary because it felt a little weird uh, but and I should have probably also waited a little longer because there is way too much movement here so Sometimes you'll get the timing off. Now, when this happens, what I do is pivot my strategy onto something that's like, okay, this is my underpainting. So I'm going to set up some temperatures, some uh, uh, just warm versus cool, and a few very basic uh, values without expecting to get any smooth transitions for actual like three-dimensionality. I kind of change my strategy a bit. Uh, I did want to lift that highlight on the forehead. Um, but I was like, okay, things aren't going my way, got the timing off, that's fine, that's okay. I'm just going to uh, go ahead with this and treat it kind of like an underpainting uh, and see what I can produce. In any case, I still have the act of merging this into the background. Uh, I want to make sure that, the, that this is really, truly feels like a chiaroscuro kind of painting with strong shadows and a few highlights that are popping away from them. Uh, and this is exactly what I'm uh, going to start doing here probably. Uh, I'm using a bunch of colors, to be honest with you, nothing too, uh, nothing that I can say in particular. And by the way, this is closer to the consistency I need, though it needs to be darker yet, uh, even more than that. Uh, I'm using this kind of a mid, mid uh, hands a medium kind of yellow. Um, I don't think it's a new gamboche, uh, together with orange. What I like is I either go with a very limited palette, um, or in this case, I just have a bunch of colors that I'm not afraid to use. I still, It's still pretty limited, as you'll see. I'm basically using the yellow, red, orange, and then also some blue and purple for the darker spots. Okay. Now, this entire right side of the face is in the shadow, so might as well get it darker now. Um, this isn't necessarily dark enough, of course. I'll probably have to go back and darken it a bit more. Uh, one thing to watch out for is some of the highlights. Uh, again, at this stage... I'm darkening things that, that while kind of avoiding the main highlights. Now, the main highlights for me are at the bridge of the nose, um, on the forehead, and probably on that eyelid on the left, which is actually the right eye. Uh, so that's something I want to make sure I don't cover. Okay. Now I'm starting to work my way onto the shadowy areas. Here it's time to really pick up the, the strength of the paint. Uh, I'm using this uh, thalo bluish, I think it's a thalo blue. 
Um, orange is uh, actually a red light, kind of a cadmium red light. Uh, and my red here is Pyrrol Scarlet. Um, the yellow, as I mentioned, I think it's it's actually it actually may be new gambos, but any yellow that's kind of in the middle will work, or warm, or whatever. The, the colors don't matter as much here. Um, so still treating this kind of like an underpainting uh, and getting some of the um, the areas, you know, just warm, cool. Uh, but with the right side, I finally uh, start using the right consistency. And it's really important, and you'll notice what I'm going to do in just a second is probably tilt the paper, or maybe I'm already doing it, tilt it a bit to the right. What I want to make sure that to avoid is the background seeping into the, uh, the head itself. Um, I want to make sure that the dark background stays to the right and there is a relatively clean uh, line of transition from light to dark. It's still a little blurry if you'll notice in the reference photo. It's not fully defined, uh, but it is there and it's pretty easy to point where the background, where the face changes to the background. So I wanted to make sure that I do that. But you see, I'm using two light colors here. I'm, I'm way too, I'm way off in that regard. Um, and and it is i don't think it's lack of courage in this example but it's kind of more of just um not paying attention enough maybe even though i was pretty focused so sometimes things will go your way sometimes they won't now the funny thing is the lesson i do want to convey is that as i mentioned probably in the intro the things do work out at the end and you will see i i really like the end result i think it has a lot of very beautiful traditional look to it uh by the way i wanted to show you how wet this is because right now I'm going to add, and you can rewind the video if you want to see it again, because it was quick, I know. But I wanted to show you um, how wet it is as I'm putting in the background. Now, for the background, I'm using a super dark um, paint. You see it's barely moving on the palette. Very, very dark, because I do want it to stay as dark as possible. Uh, I don't want to go over it. I may have to later on. Uh, as you see, the more I put the paint, the more it gets wetter. The bottom part is still wetter, so it takes more pigment to combat that. Uh, and, and very often, and I say this a lot, very often it'll be thicker than you think. You'll need to use paint that is really, that barely moves on the palette, almost straight from the well onto the page especially in these situations where the paper is still damp and you're still trying to get a very dark value. The, the wetter the paper is going to be, the harder it's going to get. Um, for instance, if the paper is fully wet, like it was in the beginning, and I'll pick up a bunch of really dry paint, it still will blend significantly. And by the way, you got to see maybe a bit more of the wetness now. But it still will blend and blur out. So you really need to... Um, to to have that in mind, for some reason at this stage I started to get things a little more accurately, but there's still a lot of work to do. As you can see, things are still, and sorry I bumped the camera, so things are still pretty uh, damp. What I want to do now is get all of the gradual transitions that I, that I that are a little more subtle, not the not the largest ones that I kind of miss the momentum on. Uh, but maybe some of the smaller ones, like the eyes, uh, they are empty, obviously, it's a, sh a statue. So you'll see a gradual transition from that shadow up top to the bottom. Uh, just a bunch of stuff. To be honest with you, and this is, I think this will help you, because I know a lot of people are watching this and thinking to themselves, okay, how <laughs> how the heck do you know where to do this? Um, there is no linear answer to that. The The real answer is, I'm starting to darken things up where I see fit based on my vision. And remember, the paint is starting to, the paper is starting to dry. So you see there is less movement now. So I can start putting in paint even where there are some sharper edges. Because I can always go back over it and sharpen the edges. Um, but but I did want to get some of these transitions now because there, there are some areas that are smooth. Uh, and if I'd wait until it's fully dry, it's not really going to work. So that's really, it was important for me. But <coughs> to tell you exactly how to know where to paint, no, the painting process is not linear. Um, it has a lot of uh, freedom within it. And instead of fearing it, I would suggest you embrace it and, and understand that it isn't linear and you can decide to work completely different than I did. And this is why I'm trying to show you a wide range, both working a la prima and also working with a with a first wash that's wet and wet. And sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Maybe a, a la prima approach would have worked better. Maybe it wouldn't. Um, 
just like colors, you can decide on whatever you want. You have so much freedom there. So don't be afraid of it, but rather embrace it. By the way, quick transition, now everything is dry, okay? Um, now you will see later on, my apologies, uh, the video skips, it missed some part. I don't know why the camera just stopped recording and I didn't notice. Um, so uh, my apologies in advance on that, but there's still time. Uh, so now everything is dry, everything is light. And in this context, you see how light it actually is. All of that work we put in so far, that we felt like we were pushing things to be quite uh, dark, they weren't that dark, okay? Now, instead of uh, fighting it for now and, and, and saying, oh, it dried so light, uh, what am I gonna do? I'm trying to just go with a bit of a lighter value than I see. Um, instead of, again, instead of saying, okay, I'll need to darken everything again, I'm just like, okay, let me lighten everything up. Let me lighten up the shadows, let me lighten up a lot of things, uh, but I end up not liking it, and so I'll end up darkening the background, darkening everything. You'll see, it's, it's a very, very clumsy process, in my opinion. Not to say that the result isn't good, again, but the process itself is clumsy. Uh, and that's okay, that's just part of it. So uh, I'm putting in that shadow for the eye socket, for the right eye, and because I'm working on a very defined shape, I can take my time, do wet and wet for the edges, for some areas that need, like this entire eye, eye should be darker. This isn't dark enough, hopefully I'll darken it a bit more, but I'll probably have to do that again later on. Uh, that left edge, the top edge, they are a little smoother, so you saw me blending them, and then moving straight onto the shadow on the nose, uh, while keeping its left edge, um, uh, again, blended. You'll see me uh, in a moment come back with some water on my brush. Um, now remember, we already have paint on paper. That's part of the challenge. So the paper isn't as absorbent. It's not gonna, blending won't be as easy. That's kind of the, the problem with uh, second and third washes and so on. The first wash will always be the easiest to achieve in that regard, uh, getting th smooth transitions and all of that. Um, now, at this stage, again, I'm kind of in the process. I'm not feeling it too much. I'm worried that I'll mess it up, but I'm still sticking to the program because I'm, I still have hope because look at the painting. Uh, some areas, like all, everything needs to be darker anyway. So can I really mess it up? It's not like I went too dark and now it's too late and I can't lift. I just need to darken pretty much everything. Um, something that still happens to me very often. I think I'll go dark enough and then I'll have to uh, darken again. Uh, so uh, just have that in mind. If you don't like what you see on paper, nothing is lost, okay? Trust me, nothing is lost. The number of times I thought things were lost when they weren't is is really a high number. And, uh, and you want to also kind of worry about things in the right timing. So don't, don't worry about now things aren't looking well. Worry about that forehead. Worry about that uh, eyelid. Worry about that highlight you need to leave. Worry about the, the thing you're working on at the moment. Uh, sometimes you need to really forget about everything else and, and just focus on what you have at hand. Something that I need to better do and learn how to better do in real life, actually. <laughs> not worry about the things I'm not currently working on. Um, so putting a few darker touches. Now look at the eyelid itself. It should be darker. So here I am helping the paint move towards the middle, but still not touching the middle. Why? Because the middle is light. The middle needs to be needs to stay as light as it is probably at the moment. Don't know if I'll succeed in it, but um, I'm putting water there in the middle to make sure that it stays kind of light, okay? Um, and really take your time with every area. You don't need to I, <laughs> drop some water there. Uh, you don't need to um, be in a hurry. Look at the edges, especially of the shapes you're working on. Um, you have to make sure that the, the edge has the right quality to it. Um, my approach here is to try and mimic the edges I see. So I can't really give any extra tips on that, just trying to mimic the edges I see. But sometimes you will want to take a few more liberties and um, soften some edges that aren't soft, uh, sharpen some edges that aren't sharp. Um, a lot of a lot of things, a lot of the composition can be influenced by that. Uh, and it's just one thing you want to have in mind. Now look at this uh, nice little side there. <laughs> Everything should be darker there because it's all in the shadow. Look at how much darker that right side is compared to the nose. Uh, and I will get it in, in the right time later on. The thing with portraits is that it's just one object that you render. So I'm rendering the the eye and the nose and all of that. It's very different from a landscape or cityscape where I can say first wash, covering everything, second wash, uh, I, I have to take care of this side and that side and that car. And it's more like one thing. 
which is why I will make the argument that, and I talked about this before, that portraits are actually easier than landscapes in a way. Uh, definitely easier than cityscapes. The, the drawing stage is hard, I, I will admit. This one I traced. I didn't want to uh, spend time drawing uh, too much. <laughs> I wanted to focus on the painting. Uh, now, again, one more thing to remember. Look at the shadow under the nose. We're nowhere near as dark. So things are still not in the final context. So don't worry if things don't look right. So I mixed some dark um, kind of violent magenta together with my phthalo blue. Uh, I find that this combination is very easy for producing dark shadows and this is what I'm doing here. Notice how I left this thin slice of area that's light. I'm gonna come back with water in or, or very thin paint and put it there and that way I'll hopefully keep it a little lighter because you see there is an area within the shadow that's a little lighter and that's a really cool tip for you so um, coming back with some water uh, just to soften that edge and then also filling in that area I just told you and that's a, a fun little uh, trick that you can use I, I very often do this if if I have a, a lighter area within a larger shadow I'll just leave it untouched and then come back with water and help the dark paint move into that area. Sometimes you'll do better if you wet the area with water and paint the dark around that and don't touch it. Um, so just a quick tip. Uh, this is something I did demo in a couple of more basic videos. So um, look at my playlist. I have this uh, beginner exercises in watercolor. Um, other than that, I'll probably need to readdress it because my skills shift and I learn new things. Kind of like that wet and wet video I did uh, in which uh, you saw that the movement really influences how how much, uh, if you move the brush, it will also move the paint more, funny enough, uh, if you, or, or less, rather. If you dab it, it's going to move more. Now, all of this left area, sometimes you need to make a decision and stick to it. Even if you already put stuff there, I'm like, okay, this needs to be darker. Let me fill it up. Now, you'll notice I'm using a blue there. Um, so I'm using my kind of interpretation of the values and of the colors, sorry. Um, so because it's in the shadow and because it's farther from us, I can use a bit of a cooler color and it will look really good compared to the yellow. Uh, now it actually looks a little green, but that's because of watercolor's properties, um, because the, the blue mixes with the yellow underneath. Now here I did something quite terrible, this cheek. I just couldn't get it to work. I put that magenta in the, into the green-ish result and it's just uneven. I didn't really like it. Um, this is really overworking. This is me overworking this uh, section there. Now, of course, because things are uh, still wet, and this is what you have to remember. You know, people say oil paintings look better overnight or after they, you give them some time to kind of spread out and blend together. Same goes for watercolor. It will look better once it kind of settles, dries. Things bl will blend very gently together. Um, so you don't have to worry about it too much. Uh, and, and it's, a, I think, a really good advice. If you feel like you messed up an area or you feel uncomfortable with it, it's okay to let it dry. Don't, like, sometimes it's worse to try and, and fix it again and again and again. Uh, so if you feel like you're overworking already, just let it dry. Uh, give it some time. Give it uh, the time to spread out a bit uh, and see what it looks like afterwards. Uh, and, and sometimes it will improve. <coughs> now, a comment about my mood during this... Uh, section I really was I was tired of not getting the value I wanted so I started I, I decided to use a bigger brush it's a trick I use sometimes to see the overall picture so I'm like okay I need to really push things dark on the left edge I'm feeling like the technique doesn't work I need to get to go into a more a la prima brave approach and look at all this it is darker so come on I need to put this area uh, to put some very dark paint into this area and then very quickly switch to a different brush, blend out the edges and continue this kind of line of thinking around the, sh the face. I was just really sick of taking it slowly and not feeling the impact I wanted. Uh, now, if you look at the center of the face, it's actually beautiful. I like how it looks. I like a lot of things about it, but uh, I just wasn't feeling like it's it's coming together into a one painting, one piece that is uh, feeling uh, feeling kind of whole and united. That was the thing that was really bugging me. So whenever that happens, what I do, and I think a lot of people will find this tip helpful, I move on to a bigger brush, bolder uh, movements. I'm like, okay, time to let go, time to let loose a bit. Maybe it will help. 
trying to change my own approach. This is really helpful sometimes. Uh, if something doesn't work, just try switching it up, changing it up. Uh, look at this shadow on the left. It's very, very dark. So why not putting in some very, very dark values onto that shadow? They will blend because it's still wet. Uh, they will move a bit. Um, depending on how uh, thick you, of a paint you use. If it's fully thick, it will move a little less, but still, we'll, you will see some movement. And look at the right edge. Also needs some darkening. The right edge and right side of the background. So I will make that distinction between the hair uh, and the background, and then between the forehead, all of that. Bold, dark paint. Don't worry about it. Things that aren't working aren't going your way. Take a few steps back. Uh, and maybe go with a more direct approach. Funny enough, sometimes that direct approach is the key. Very often people use it as an excuse to kind of paint quickly and, and uh, maybe uh, avoid thinking. And now I'm not using it in a way to avoid thinking. I'm just using it in a way of seeing the whole picture. Um, and you see, it, it takes time. To, I'm fighting against the paper surface. This isn't the first wash anymore. Um, and it's fine. It's fine. That's That's just a part of the process to me. Uh, this top section should be darker. Uh, the, the the entire middle is way too light too. There's some mid values to establish, and and this is the challenge with watercolor. Sometimes you can't mix the paint, and just as you see it, put it on paper. You will put it on paper. It's not gonna come out the way you want. It's not gonna look this the exact way you wanted it to because you have no way of knowing. That's the thing. You have no way of knowing exactly beforehand. So it's just a part of the game. Uh, darkening that spot was very important, still not dark enough. You see there's a beautiful reflected light on the under the chin, in the fat area, I guess fatty area there. Um, so you want to preserve that, but still push the things that need to be darker, darker. Uh, and I don't know exactly what it is with this process, maybe I was a little impatient uh, in the first stages, though I didn't really feel like that. Um, I don't know, some scenes you'll just vibe with better, some some things, scenes <laughs> you won't. Um, but look at this now, probably missed some of that uh, reflected shadow. I don't remember if I darkened that pointy part on the chin because it's really beautiful. It's something to really show, like the reflected light. Um, but yeah, that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> Close to finishing, there isn't really uh, almost anything left to the process. Um, I just went with a bold approach, really. The, nothing much to say about this section. I just really felt like, okay, come on. I'm not, I'm not getting the paint I want. Uh, and this is something you'll have to train with. Uh, by the way, here's where the video skips a bit. So I'm starting to really dry, uh, to really darken this area of the eyelid. And that, for some reason, it jumped on me. But basically, what I did was darken a few areas that needed to be darker. And also smoothen the transition from uh, the super dark on the left to the cheek. Uh, a little more to the right. So sorry about that again. Um, and uh, what well, I was going to say something. Yeah, here it jumps. Sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm a little all over the place. Even watching this process makes me go all over the place. Um, but yeah, it's just sometimes the technique doesn't feel as 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 easy going. And you have to forgive yourself. Maybe try a different approach. But in any case, I'm going to sign this, I think, in just a moment. Um, and you can always take a break, like a long break of a few hours, a day or two. Let it sit and and maybe paint one small detail a day. You'll you'll look at it and you're like, ah, this is not good. I'm gonna go over that. This is this should be darker. I'm gonna go over this. You know, just break it into multiple parts. It's perfectly fine. Now let me show you. Okay, I'm removing the tape. Obviously, it improves what it looks like. Uh, I'm way too harsh on myself. I know. I'll also show you the final result, like in a picture form. And also zoomed in now. Uh, it looks much, much better, I, I have to admit, for f much better than I suspected it will uh, while painting. So there is hope, here we go, uh, and now let's wrap it up. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the process, seeing me struggle a bit through it, not really feeling it, uh, but in the end, after just a few, like a day or two, I was like, this is actually really nice, and I actually like the result. Um, it's a subject I really like painting. The challenge is always there when the background kind of merges and seeps into the actual uh, object and merges with it. 
but it's one of those things that are very important to establish early on just to make sure that you have that smooth flow whenever or wherever it's necessary. So thank you so much for watching. One last note, I will remind you that as, as I mentioned, if I haven't gotten to critique your painting that you sent me during that last live stream session, I will and I will post it in a video next week. So I will give you like a, vi a consolidated video review to all the paintings that were sent to me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And one last thing. I have to apologize because I've been a little slow to answer emails just because I was sick, May wasn't feeling so well, uh, it was, uh, we have a bunch of personal stuff to take care of, just a lot of, uh, a couple of very busy weeks, so sorry if I'm slow to respond to emails, my apologies, I'm just one person, but I'm doing my best, and we'll get to everyone, and, and I am trying to, of course, the, the, the important things and the more pressing things and like customer support for the courses and stuff like that, I do try to do as frequently as possible. So I really wanna thank you for your patience, for anyone who joined the course recently, I really do appreciate it, and just, I, I really really love everyone here. So thank you so, so much uh, for being a part of this. And I will see you again in the next video.